So good afternoon, good morning tigers. This will be the last video of your spring break homework. So hopefully you are at this video, uh, not on Sunday night before it's due, but sometime the first week of your spring break. So statistics and probability. You're gonna see this word bias. Bias means it's, it's a survey or they're trying to find the probability of something, but it's not really fair. So bias means it's not fair. Inferences are like an educated guess or like a hypothesis. I forgot to mention this before I started explaining this. If I were you, I'd pause the video, write these things down, and then play them so I can explain them to you and you can follow along on your notes. The next thing on our list is convenience sampling. So convenience sampling is sampling that um, is convenient. So think of like a mini market. Instead of going to the grocery store, the mini market's uh, closer maybe to your house. It's a little bit more convenient. It's easy. It's accessible. So that's what a convenience sampling is. Now representative sampling. Representative sampling is a small sample or a small survey that's accurate and reflects something larger. So let's say we want to find a survey for the United States. That means we would um, maybe get a small sample of people, maybe the most diverse city, maybe LA, and we can survey people in LA, and that represents something larger, which would be the United States, but the small sample would be that it's gonna be limited to one city. Convenience sampling, could be an example of uh, maybe you want to survey everybody that has a pet and you go to PetSmart uh, because it's down the street from you and you don't have to survey the millions of people that have a pet in America. So convenient sampling could be just going to maybe PetSmart and asking a couple of customers that are um, in PetSmart. One thing we reviewed, with, we reviewed with probability was mean, median, mode, and range. So let's say you have a sequence of numbers that's like 1, 7, 5, and 7. So the mean is all these numbers added up divided by the amount of numbers that there are. So if you add those up, try to add those up quickly in your head. So you get 20, and how many numbers are there? 4 divided by 4. So 20 divided by 4 is 5. So our mean is 5. Now our median, you have to put them in order. So 1, 5, 7, 7. And we cross out 1 from the right and 1 from the left. 1 from the right and 1 from the left. However, we have 2 in between. So we can add these two together and divide by 2. Or we can just logically think about this. What number is between 5 and 7? What number is between that? 6. So our median is 6. Now our mode is the number you see the most. So what number do you see the most? 1, 5, or 7? Hopefully you said 7. The range is the highest number minus the smaller number. So the larger number is 7 and our smallest number is 1. 7 minus 1 is 6. So our range is 6. Another thing we learned about was this box and whisker plot. Something I want you to remember is that this is your minimum, this is your maximum point, um, this is your first quartile, so Q1, this is your second quartile, or you can also call this your median, this line, and this right here is your third quartile, so your Q3. So your Q3 would be 5, your median would be 4, your first quartile would be 2, your minimum would be 1, and your max would be 7 in this case. Now, one more thing that you guys might be asked to find is this, this thing called an IQR. That means it's an interquartile range. So say that with me, interquartile range. And these are your quartiles right here. These right here, right? So we're looking for the range. And the range of this is 5 minus 2. So 5 minus 2 would be 3. So it's asking you for the range inside this box. So you're going to go three spaces, which you are. You have 1, 2, and 3 spaces in this box. So interquartile range is concerned with your first quartile minus your third quartile. 
I want you guys to remember how to convert a decimal into a fraction and to a percentage. So this decimal is 0 0.17. That's equivalent to 17 over 100. And that's equivalent to 17 percent. Now let's say you're given a percentage. Now let's say you're given a percentage. So let's say they give you a percentage of, I don't know, 22 percent. All right, how do you turn that into a fraction? Well, you just put 22 over 100. How do you turn that into a decimal? 0.22 or 0 0.22. Now the tricky part is converting this decimal, 0 0.6. You automatically might think in your mind, oh, this is going to be 6%. But you're going to see that that's wrong. So 6 goes over 100. Um, but do you see how this is in the tenths place? So tenths place means that that's not really 6 over 100. That's 60 over 100. So 60 over 100 means that this percentage is actually 60. 6% 6 looks like this. 6% looks like, like this. 6 over 100. And that written as a decimal is 0 0.06. All right, so another way you can remember how to convert a decimal into a percent is just shift this decimal two places to the right and then put a percent symbol at the end of it. So this right here is 6, and this would be 60. See that? And this would be 22. And this one up here would be 17%. If you, so if you come across a question that's asking you what's 8% of 2,425, the easiest way to do this is to convert this percent into a decimal. So you know that this is 0 0.08. Because remember, you're going to bring it two places to the left, put a 0 in its place as a placeholder. So now you have 2,425. You multiply that by 0.08. And that tells you the 8% of that amount of people or whatever it is it's asking you. So this is my drawing of a bag. I know, I'm not an artist, I'm a mathematician. <laughs> so if it's asking you what's the probability that if you pick an object out of this bag that you'll get a circle. So first you want to count how many objects are in this bag. So if you count how many objects are in this bag, there's actually 9 objects. So the amount of objects is 9. So if it's going to ask you the probability of a square or a triangle, you're always going to reference the total amount. And in this case, it's 9. So let's say, what's the probability of you getting a square out of the bag? Well, how many squares are there? 3. Out of how many objects? 9. You can reduce this by dividing both by 3 over 3, which gets you 1 third. So that's the probability. Now let's say, what's the probability of you getting a circle? You guys should know there's three circles. How many objects? Nine. You can also divide three over three, which gets you one third. And last but not least, how many triangles are there? There are three out of how many objects? Nine. So that's one over three. So now it's, let's say it's asking you, what's the probability of you getting a square and a circle? Ooh, now this is where it gets tricky. So if it's asking you for a square and a circle, how many squares and how many circles do you have? Six. Out of how many objects? Nine. If you reduce this by dividing by three over three, what's your probability? Two over three. So you have a two-thirds chance of getting a square and a circle. All right, this is the last of the quiz, not quizette videos, I'm sorry, spring break homework videos. I'm exhausted. Pretty sure you guys are exhausted too. Again, I want to apologize for putting you guys through this pain, but it'll be so worth it when you guys are all math geniuses. Uh, I am proud of you if you've gotten this far. Go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Give yourself a high five from me. Love you guys. I already miss you. I know. I'm weird. I actually love my job. I will see you guys at the end of March. No, I'll see you at the beginning of April. Um, stay safe. Look both ways before crossing the street. I'll stop talking now. Taylor Swift rules. I love coffee. Bye.